Who do you reflect on your performance in 2023? What went well and what went badly? And I'm going to kick off that question with James. Thank you, Annabelle. Gosh, 2023, big year. Very, uh, very such a changeable year. Uh, we went into 2023 unfashionably, unfashionably positive. Um, so we had gearing on the trust, um, which currently sits at about 14%. Um, which was a real, you know, kicker to returns. It, it, it enabled us to to benefit from positive equity markets. We also bought back quite a lot of shares because, as you said, discounts across the sector wide and including our own. So, so that was positive for us. But really, you know, the key drivers of returns for Whitson have to be our our investment portfolio that we outsource to our managers. So, um, our core portfolio, which is primarily developed market equities, that was a that was a generally a positive, particularly those managers that bought into technology and an AI companies. Yeah, those were real drivers for us. Um, on the negative side, some of the more specialist assets, particularly those that we own through investment companies where discounts widened, although I'm pleased to say that the NAV performance of most of those um, trusts were, 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 were pretty stable. Um, so, so that's really the theme. Growth was good, value not so good. Um, until later, until right towards the end of the year, actually, although we're not quite there yet, um, the current environment seems to be favouring value. So, um, so, so again, you know, that, that's why we like having this balanced portfolio. Um, and what was really nice to see as well is our specialist managers focusing on the UK and on emerging markets, although those were two difficult markets, sorry, those two markets had a difficult time, our managers were able to outperform them. Thank you very much, James. Well, Valley being in favour, uh, let me ask the same question to Alex Wright. What went well? What didn't, Alex, for you last this year? Yeah, it's been a it, it's been an unusual year because overall, the, the the benchmark in the UK sort of year to date isn't up very much, sort of two or three percent, and the trust has performed pretty close to that, sort of marginally um, below. Um, and when you look at sort of where that performance has come from, though, there's been a lot of movement underneath the surface. So a lot of volatility in stocks and indeed our best performing stock in terms of contribution is up 40 percent year to date um, and, and is also one of the top five positions, um, a company called DCC, um, which sort of sums up actually perfectly what we do. It's a, a sort of unusual company. It's a conglomerate. Those aren't very fashionable anymore. Um Actually, nothing really has changed that much in this year. It's more perceptions around the company, I think, were overly negative through last year. Uh, particularly, you saw this on a lot of stocks towards the end of 2022. And so the valuation just got to very low levels and they continued to deliver this year. Uh, and it has resulted in a surprisingly strong absolute stock price performance mm. through the year. If you look at the, the downside, so what's been less good, um, it's mainly compared to the UK index that we we don't own oil, gas and coal. So that's been another strongly performing sector this year. The likes of BP, Shell, Glencore, big names in the UK index that we don't own. Um, and their, their performance on a, a relative basis compared to the index, not owning those has been a detractor. Uh, I do think returns have been quite good for those companies for, for quite a while now. Uh, sort of you've seen strong oil prices through 2022 um, uh, before 2023 as well and again that, that they've come off at the margin so that's an area that we don't have a great deal of exposure to in, in large caps um, and we're happy to continue to um, keep that position um, but that has hurt us relative to the, the, the FTSE this year. Thanks so much for being so frank. So frank, Alex, that's really, really helpful. Emily, what's gone well for you and what hasn't gone so well? 2023 has been a great year for us. Um, and that's really because sort of the two components of how we do research have both really worked. The first one being sort of the country allocation that we do. And there we came into the year um, thinking that by the end of the year, we would expect rates to fall globally. We haven't quite reached that point, but we certainly have in emerging and frontier markets. And we've started to see many of our so carry countries um, really do well on the back of that. So we had strong performance from Indonesia, from Eastern Europe, from some of our uh, Chile, Colombia on the back of that. At the same time, actually, stock selection has been really strong this year. Um, and I think we've had nearly 10 companies up more than 50% in the portfolio this year. Um, so just one of those years where the extreme low valuations in frontier markets have been recognized in one or two places. And um, I'd really highlight that the Saudi mid cap space, 
as a place where investors actually got really excited this year and really discovered some names that were just completely ignored beforehand. Valuation seemed very substantial re-rating. So just pockets of that that we've been able to capture through the year. And, and on the negative side, I mean, part of the reasons why it's been a good year is because something hasn't blown up this year. In frontier markets, there's there's always something that's having a terrible year. Um, and 2023, touch wood, so far, you know, we've avoided it, um, which has definitely hasn't been the case in the past. So I'm not trying to blow my own trumpet but uh, at all. But, but this year has been a good year in terms of it being able to avoid some of the poor performing countries. That's great, Emily. I'm really glad you've avoided those uh, blow ups. 